Welcome once again. Let's open with a word of prayer. Then we're going to get right into our message today. I'm believing God that this word that I share with you is going to open your eyes to new insights and new revelations from the Word of God that is going to change your life forever. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone that is watching this broadcast, wherever they might be, whether it's here in America or abroad, I pray in Jesus' name that this Word will bring insight and revelation, and because of it, their lives will never be the same. Jesus, I remind you that you said you would build your church upon the rock of revelation knowledge, and when the gates of hell attempt to overtake it, they shall not prevail. So I believe that to be true in the life of every person that is watching this broadcast. The gates of hell will not prevail in their lives. In Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. If you believe that, say amen. We've been talking about our covenant of increase. And I want to take you back to Genesis chapter 12 once again. This is our fourth week on this subject. And those of you that missed out on the first three, well, we've got some resources we're going to be offering you a little later in the broadcast. And it talks about a lot of the material that we've covered over the previous three weeks. So you'll be watching for that. Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 2, God says to this man by the name of Abram, and you know, he later changes his name to Abraham. And he says, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now, I'm going to spend some time a little later in this broadcast, on this lesson, talking about thou shalt be a blessing. That's the purpose for increase in your life. It's, it's one thing to experience increase and consume it all on yourself. But that's not God's plan. God wants you to become a distribution center. He wants to bring increase into your life so that you can share it with other people that are in need. And let me tell you something. That's one of the greatest joys you'll ever experience in your life. When you're so blessed that you're able to share it with someone else and meet the needs of others. That's an exciting way to live. But we'll get to that in just a moment. So notice once again, God says to Abram, I will bless thee. Now, once again, the word bless means empower to prosper, empower to succeed, empower to excel, empower to multiply, empower to increase. So when God established covenant with Abraham, he gave him the empowerment through the blessing to experience increase in every area of his life. And we find that taking place once again in Genesis chapter 13 and verse 2, and Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So notice this covenant of increase is already working for him, and he's increasing not only from a spiritual standpoint, but he's increasing materially and financially as well. In fact, it says in verse 6 that the land was not able to bear them, talking about Lot and Abraham, the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. In fact, there was such increase that came into Abraham's life, particularly where cattle and flocks and herds were concerned, that the land was not able to contain them. That's that covenant of increase working. How'd you get to play, like to get to the place in your life where, you know, there's just too much, so much that you're having to pray and ask God, what do you want me to do with all this leftover, all this increase that I'm not even in need of? Wow, can you imagine doing that? I can almost hear some of you thinking out loud. No, Brother Jerry, I can't imagine that happening. Well, this covenant, if you'll study it, it's designed to enlarge your thinking, praise God. So notice here, this covenant of increase is working so well that the land can't even contain all that God has brought into their lives. So once again, it is a covenant of increase. And then we find in um, uh, chapter 13, once again, beginning in verse 14, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for the all the land which thou seest, 
to thee will I give thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So notice, God is talking increase to him. He's saying, Abraham, I will bring increase in every area of your life. In fact, I'm going to increase your substance. I'm going to increase the amount of land that you own. He said, in fact, you look as far as you can see, north, south, east, and west. I'm going to give that to you. Why? Because this is a covenant of increase. What have I been saying over the last three weeks? And I'm going to say it again on this broadcast. If you're not experiencing increase, then that is a violation of your covenant. And if you're not experiencing increase, then it could be because of a lack of knowledge on your part, or it could be your adversary is stealing from you. Whatever the case, correct it right now. If it's a matter of a lack of knowledge, then get in the Word and learn your covenant. That's what these resources are all about that I'll make available to you a little later to help you increase in your knowledge of the covenant. One of those resources is entitled The Power of the Blessing, three CDs. And it talks about how that the blessing of God will bring increase into your life, how to operate in that blessing. That's why you need to study it. Now, if it's on the other hand, the devil is stealing from you, then you need to understand that you have authority over the devil. Don't just sit back and let him do it. You know, if a thief came into your house and said, I'm going to take everything you got, then do everything you can to overpower him. If you got a baseball bat, hit him in the head. You know, do something and let him know you're not going to just come in here and take everything I've worked hard for. Well, let me tell you something. There's somebody coming in your house every day worse than some common thief, you know, and his name is Satan. And that devil is trying to take everything you have. He's trying to keep you from enjoying the increase that God wants to bring to you. So take authority over him. Tell him, Satan, in the name of Jesus, no more. You have stolen from me for the last time. And stand on the word of God. And the Bible says, if you resist him, then he must flee. So don't just sit there and allow the devil to steal from you when you can do something about it. Amen? So notice once again, this covenant of increase is working so well in Abraham's life that his gold is increasing, his silver is increasing, his cattle is increasing, his land is increasing. Why? Because it is a covenant of increase. And notice God said this didn't end with Abraham, that it extended to his seed. Now we know Isaac was his seed. We know Jacob was his seed. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and right on down the line. But here's the beautiful part. And I've mentioned this on a previous broadcast. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. If you be Christ, or in other words, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, then you too are now the seed of Abraham. And that means this covenant of increase that works for Abraham will now work for you, praise God. So there should be evidence of increase in your life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, once again, let's just look at this covenant of increase working beyond just Abraham, because I want you to understand it will work for you as well. In uh, uh, Genesis uh, chapter uh, oh, 28, it says, and I will give the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed and with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. This is what God was saying to Jacob. Now, in Genesis chapter 26, you can see it working for Isaac. The man increased. Even in a famine, God brought increase into his life. The Bible says he gained more and more until he became extremely wealthy. And now here with Jacob, it says, God says to him, I'll give you the blessing of Abraham and to your seed. And so that you will experience the same increase as your father Abraham. And we see that it worked for him. We see that it worked for Joseph and right on down the line. Now, there's a scripture, uh, a phrase in a scripture that I came across earlier today. And uh, to be very honest with you, 
I hadn't looked at this that often. I know that I've read it before, but uh, it just jumped out at me today before coming into the studio. And it's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 15. And God is saying, be ye mindful always of the covenant. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. That means be covenant minded. Have the covenant on your mind all the time. Get up in the morning thinking covenant of increase. Go to bed at night thinking covenant of increase. Don't just uh, allow the devil to control your life when your covenant will bring victory. It'll bring success. It'll bring prosperity. It'll bring increase if you know how to operate in it. But it begins with you being mindful of that covenant. I like to say covenant minded. Hallelujah. Get up every day thinking of the power of the covenant, thinking the power of the blessing, and then begin to expect it to work. One of the ways that you do this, and this is so important, is through the words of your mouth. You know, it's not just sitting around and saying in your mind, I have a covenant. That's wonderful. It needs to be a thought that is in your mind, a, a thought, a dominant thought that is in your mind. But the way you release spiritual power is through the words of your mouth. It's when you begin talking it. It's when you get up in the morning saying, I have a covenant with Almighty God. And you add to that, it is a covenant of increase. And you add to that, and I expect that covenant of increase to work for me today. And then add to that, and God expects increase in my life. You see, you're talking your covenant. And the Bible talks about how that the words of our mouth carry life and death. The words of our mouth make us or break us. The words of our mouth have a way of determining our destiny. So get up every morning covenant-minded and covenant-talking. Amen? And then you'll begin to experience the kind of increase that God wants you to have. Now, once again, let's go back to this Genesis chapter 12 where God says to Abraham, I will not only bless you, but I will make you a blessing. I will make you a blessing. What does that mean? I, I wrote down this definition the Lord gave me years ago. Here's what the Lord said to me that blessing means. It is to be an instrument through which His divine favor flows, bringing happiness and joy and preventing misfortune in the lives of others. Let me say that again. We're going to put it up on the screen where you can write it down. What is a blessing? This is the definition the Holy Spirit gave me. In fact, I'm reading from notes from 1985. So that's when he gave me this definition, 1985. I said, Lord, what does it mean to be a blessing? And here's what he said. It means to be an instrument through which my divine favor flows, bringing happiness and joy and preventing misfortune in the lives of others. So when I'm a blessing and I'm able to help somebody else, that's the favor of God flowing through me. I am now God's vessel. I am now God's instrument. And his favor is flowing through me into that person that I'm blessing. And when I'm blessing someone, let's say it's financially. You know, if I, if I come across someone that is in need financially and the Lord is leading me to help them, assist them, now I'm going to be a blessing to them. But let's stop and think. I can't be a blessing if I'm not blessed. So God says, first, I'll bless you. And then he says, and when I bless you, then I'm expecting you to be a blessing. So that means I have the means to do something to help this person. So when I determine that I'm going to be a blessing, what's happening? I am now God's instrument. I am God's vessel. And his favor is flowing through me to them. And when I bless them financially, what am I doing? I am preventing misfortune in their life. I am bringing joy and happiness to them. You know, I remember a number of years ago when uh, there were some friends of ours that lived here in Fort Worth and they were in great need. They were, they were renting a house, uh, leasing a house, and they got behind on their lease payments and they couldn't make the payments. And, and so now 
the person who owned the house is going to uh, make them move because they're behind on the payments. And I came home from a meeting and my wife told me that, that uh, she had heard that if they didn't have X amount of dollars by midnight tonight, that the person who owned the house was forcing them to move out. And she said, we've got to help them. They had, uh, it was a couple and they had, you know, four or five, six kids and they didn't have any place to go. And I said, you know what, Carolyn, the Lord blessed me personally while I was away this week. Not only, you know, did, did I receive uh, contributions into the ministry, but somebody blessed me personally. I said, how much do they need? She told me, and it was exactly what I had been blessed with. I said, I've got that. I said, let's go. Let's go give them the money so that they don't have to be put out of their house. So we got in the car and we drove across town to where they lived. And when we got there, and it's probably, I don't know, uh, 11 o'clock at night. They have to be out by midnight if they don't have the money. And when we got there, some of the little kids were carrying their toys out to the truck and putting them in the bed of the truck. And the, uh, the mother was taking, you know, dishes and stuff and putting them in the car. They were moving out because they didn't have the money. And they were told, if you don't have the money by mid midnight, you've got to leave. And so there they were in the process of having to leave and nowhere to go. When we drove up, one of the little, the little girls said, Brother Jerry, what are you doing here? I said, come on, kids, we're not moving the night. Let's take it all back in there. And we took it all back in there, and I told the mom and dad that the Lord had blessed us, and we had come to be a blessing. Now, they got to stay in their home. We caught them up on their lease payments, and they got to stay in their home. Now, what happened? We were God's instrument God's vessel, we got to be a blessing. And how were we able to be a blessing? Because God had blessed us. Now his favor is flowing from us to them. And now because we were able to meet that need in their lives, we prevented misfortune. I don't know where they would have gone that night. I guess they would have just parked out on the street and slept in the car and slept in the truck. I don't know. But I do know they were better off not having to move. It prevented misfortune, and you ought to have seen the joy and the happiness on those kids' face. I tell you, that was worth it all right there, just seeing the joy of them being able to go back in that house, sleep in their own bed, and not be concerned with being put out on the street. So this is why God wants you to increase. It's not just so you can hoard it up on yourself. God wants you to live well. God wants you to have a good life. And let me tell you something. I'm living a good life. Me giving them that money to help them didn't hurt me at all. In fact, God brought more blessing to me because you can't outgive God. You just, you just keep the cycle going. God just keeps bringing more increase. And then you find out where God wants you to be a blessing. In fact, Galatians chapter 6, the apostle Paul makes this statement, uh, be a blessing. In the Amplified Bible, it says, be mindful to be a blessing. In other words, get up every day as God is bringing increase into your life. Say, God, where can I share some of my increase? Where can I be a blessing? And you sow into other people's lives and be a blessing to them. And God just keeps it coming. I'm telling you, folks, God has got this all figured out so that you can live the abundant life, live life better than you've ever imagined. So this is a covenant of increase. You know, Another reason God wants you to increase is because I believe we're the generation that's going to usher the return of Jesus. And oh, Jesus said that one of the things that must be accomplished before he returns is this gospel must be preached to all nations. Folks, we can't do that broke. The body of Christ cannot preach the gospel to all nations if we're broke. That's why God has given us a covenant of increase. As we increase, as the blessings of God brings increase into our life, then we're able to do more for the kingdom of God. We're able to support missionaries and apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and, and the work of the ministry. And as we do that, then we're able to reach out to more people. That's why partnership is so important. When God brings increase into your life, Take some of that increase and partner with the ministry that's reaching out to the world. 
Pray about where God wants you to partner. That's biblical. That's scriptural. And when you partner with other ministries that are reaching out to the world, then you're helping fulfill the commission of the Lord Jesus. That's why he wants you to increase. You know, when I first met Kenneth Copeland back in 1969, and he preached the word that changed my life, after he left town, and I didn't have a dollar to my name. I was so deep in debt, and, and I didn't have a dollar to my name. But I said, Lord, when this begins to work, I'm sending that man $1,000 because I know there are other Jerry Savelles out there just like me that need to hear what this man preaches. $1,000? Are you kidding me? Where in the world would I get $1,000? This is 1969. $1,000 in 1969 would be like $100,000 today. You know, and where would I get that kind of money? But you know, it was a desire of my heart and I'd made up my mind that this covenant it's not a matter of if it works, it's a matter of when it works. And I made up my mind, when it works, that's what I'm going to do. And you know, it didn't take a long, long time. It didn't happen overnight, but I'll never forget when I was able to put that thousand dollars into his ministry. You know what happened? Because I was obedient and I sowed and I helped him to reach out to other people, God brought increase into my life. And eventually I was able to sow more, not only into his ministry, but a number of ministries. I'm telling you, God wants to bring increase into your life so that you can be a blessing. Determine today that you are not going to settle for anything less than God's best. And God's best is increase more and more. What's this announcement? It's about these special products that we have available to you. It's the last time we're going to be offering them. So make sure you sit down and get the information on your screen and order them today. I'll be back in just a few moments. Hello, I'm Brother Jerry, and I have some exciting news for you. The Jerry Savelle Bible School is now ready. You can enroll. Each course is online, and we're excited about this School Without Walls. You know, the great thing about it is you don't have to come to Fort Worth, Texas and enroll and be in classroom. You can take each course at your own pace, at your own time. As you enroll and begin to take these courses, you're going to receive in-depth teaching from God's Word. It's going to help build a foundation for living by faith and learning how to receive everything that God has for you. I'd like for you to prayerfully consider enrolling in this Bible school. I believe it will be very beneficial Fisher for you, and I look forward to having the opportunity to impart into your life. Thank you, and God bless you. We are here for you. Become the winner that God wants you to be. Jerry Savelle Ministries has faith-building, encouraging posts, resources, videos, and more that are just a swipe, click, or download away. Don't let a day go by without building your faith. Follow and like us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Also, make sure to visit jerrysavelle.org and share your prayer request or praise reports with us. We want to connect our faith with yours and celebrate what God is doing in your life. Biblical prosperity is God's intended lifestyle for all believers. In the revolutionary book, Why God Wants You to Prosper, Jerry Savelle establishes a biblical foundation for understanding the principles of divine prosperity with a special focus on the reasons why many of God's people are in financial bondage. God has provided the way out. You are blessed to be a blessing. Also included in today's package is the eye-opening five CD teaching, The Power of the Blessing. In this series, Jerry Savelle teaches how the blessing of 
God will cause you to live a rich life, how you can receive and experience this heavenly empowerment, and how the blessing will cause you to rise above troubles and limitations, and much more. Don't wait. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Covenant of Increase package, including why God wants you to prosper and the power of the blessing. You can enjoy the peace, quietness, and confidence that come from allowing God to direct your finances for His purposes today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's what the Bible says. If you want to increase your faith, then continually listen to the Word of God. That's why we produce these resources, so that you can hear them over and over again. The power of the blessing. That's what we've been talking about for the last four weeks, what the blessing will do in your life. I'm telling you, as you listen to these three CDs, your faith is going to rise to a new level in the power of the blessing operating in your life. And then right along with that, the book, Why God Wants You to Prosper. Now, here's what we get into. Much of what we were talking about at the end of the teaching session today, why God wants you to prosper is so that you can be a blessing to others. It's so that you can help meet the needs of other people, and it's so that you can help further the kingdom of God. Why God wants you to prosper. These are valuable tools that will help you grow in your knowledge of your covenant and will help you understand why God wants you to increase. So let me encourage you, order them today. And let me also uh, let you know that our partners are so special to us and we appreciate each and every one of you. And those of you that have never partnered with this ministry, but this ministry has been a blessing to you, prayerfully consider becoming a partner. If you'd like more information on how to do that, the information that you're requesting, how to order it is on the screen right now. So take advantage of that and we'll show you how you can become a partner and how that you can begin to partake of the same grace that is on this ministry. Partnership is a valid New Testament principle, and I believe that as you participate in it, you're going to experience a, a, a level of blessing that you've never experienced before. All of you that have prayer requests, please contact us. We love praying and believing God with you for the miracle and the breakthrough and the healing and the deliverance that you're believing for in your life today. I want to encourage you to join with me next week. We're going to begin a brand new series. And also before we leave the air, I speak the blessing of God over you. I speak favor over you. I speak supernatural increase over you. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to being with you again next week. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world. Next week. Everything that God has for us is received by faith. I'll say it again. Everything that God has for us is received by faith. There's no other way to obtain it. Amen. That's the reason why the Bible says the just shall live by faith.